Hi there, Mats from Simulate here, showing live effects with uh, projection mapping onto this LED wall over there. And we will be using a pre recorded 360 X rectangular clip. So, to get started, you would load the clip here into your construct inside live effects, just to have it inside the, power, uh, inside the software. And I'll next click projection setup. Now, before actually creating our projection setup, as you can see, I already have a stage defined here called Orbital Studios. I'll quickly show you how to do that. So for that, click the Edit button, and this will open our Stage Manager here. So, in the Stage Manager, you can define a stage. Right now, I only have this one called Orbital Studios. Um, I can add a new one. Let me quickly do that, call it New Stage. And I can fill that stage with wall. A stage is basically just a grouping of walls, defining the stage and how the different LED walls are arranged on that stage. So I can create a new wall using this dialog. So I will call this uh, fake wall. Um, and I can define it in terms of what is it? A wall, floor, ceiling, how many uh, tiles it has, columns and rows, tile size, and also tile resolution. And if it's a curved wall, I can also put in the wall curvature. Uh, once I hit OK, this will save an OBJ mesh file to the output folder path. Um, and then I can re-import that if I want, but obviously once I hit OK, this wall just gets added in here. So as you can see, here is my fake wall. All right, and next, um, uh, I can define the wall's position uh, in relation to the scene origin over here, right? So right now the wall is placed exactly at the scene origin, which usually is not the case. Um, most importantly, I need to activate this new stage. So now this is my active stage. However, I have predefined a stage, so let's go back to the Orbital Studio stage here, activate this. Um, and this wall here is basically the wall that we're seeing right in front of us. Now, this wall has a resolution of 2.8K times 1.5K down here. And I will have to map that to my dual head output. So what we're doing right now is our NVIDIA GPU inside the Silverdraft system is outputting a UHD sized signal to the LED processor here. And um, if we switch up here from model to the mapper tab, we can tell LiveVX which portion of our outgoing UHD signal, which goes out the dual head from the GPU, uh, should go to the LED wall. So this is basically yeah, mapping the signal to the wall, simply. And of course, this also corresponds to how the wall is mapped onto the UHD signal on the LED processor itself. Uh, through the mosaic option up here, uh, I could even arrange multiple LED walls if I had more LED walls set up. I all wanted to feed them with my uh, UHD size dual head output. I could arrange them here in any way I want. Right now it's this. You have up here, you have the uh, view and it's really just a viewing thing whether you want to see the walls on the current display, the display being the dual head sending out UHD and the wall. Uh, being 2.8K times 1.5K, or the other way around, displays on current wall, um, which yeah, doesn't make sense uh, with just a single display, to be honest. Uh, to map the display, you would enable the map option here, and then you can grab it and move it over here, which I will refrain from doing right now. To test your setup, we have this preview button up here. Once I click that, I will be thrown into the player and now we can see that we're pretty much pretty perfectly mapped. So this pattern contains the exact tile count. As we can see, we have uh, 11 columns and six rows down here as defined in the stage manager. And this is exactly what we're seeing here, 11 uh, columns and six rows. And now we can basically move this around here. Let me quickly uh, put it to, uh, let's say 530. So this is now completely offset. This is not great. Let's do minus 530. Now you can see on the left, we're cutting off a little bit. And for this particular stage, uh, 
512 minus is the correct offset to have this fit our LED wall exactly. All right, so now that we have uh, set up our wall, we could obviously add more walls to this stage in here by loading OBJ files that we might have created. Here's our fake wall. Now I have two small walls, let me delete that again. Um, but in this particular setup, we only have one wall in our stage and that's it. All right, so I'll hit the, the R button here to reset the preview output, um, close the stage manager and go back to the construct. So um, we go back to the construct. Here's our clip that we want to project. What we basically do is hit the projection setup button like this. We select our stage up here that we defined earlier. We give our child a name, new test projection mapping. Uh, we will choose our clip to project either through the browse button or we can just drag it in here. Now this clip doesn't have the metadata that tells it to be a rectangular, so we have to enable it here automatically. Um, but we can also tell each and every clip that it is a rectangular here in the metadata stack. So now I told it it's a rectangular 360. Uh, if I disable this and I drop it back in, then it will be enabled by default because it picks up on the metadata. We choose our camera profile, Magic 12K with the Sigma lens and our NCAM trackers, and we enable frost highlight. Uh, projection type, we will choose sphere instead of dome. Dome is, is good for vast landscape with a far away horizon. Um, if we don't have that, sphere works better. I'll leave the capture scene stuff alone for now because we're not doing a set extension um, and hit create. So now we're, we're inside the Live VIX tab and what we should do is make sure all our settings work as expected. So I'll first pop up the live links panel and I can see the income trackers are active, has found a tracker, it is connected, has no delay, no smoothing whatsoever to start with and the tracking information, including zoom information is coming in. All right, so far so good, let's close that. Go into the stage manager, um, we can see our camera and if I quickly get up and move our camera, we should see it move fluidly in the stage manager. Perfect. So we've checked that this is working. And just in case we wouldn't see anything on our LED wall, we'd go ahead and quickly, actually this should be 512 minus, and now it's put correctly. Um, and this all works nicely, very well. All right, so we can uh, close stage manager for now and should check on other things in our node tree. For instance, uh, what we should check is down here in the camera menu, by default, the focal length parameter here won't be linked. So control clicking it pops up the animation editor and we can link the focal length to the incoming zoom data from the income system. Going back here, we can now see it has this little line here. It's animated by the live link coming in from NCAM. All right, so far so great. Uh, this is working. Uh, what else do we need? So we have these layers up here, frustum outer, inner, um, and frustum mat. So if I enable the alpha channel down here, I can see the frustum mat, that's this. And now, as you can see, uh, we are indeed grading the outer frustum here, making it darker. So if I go to numeric, we can actually also make it brighter if we want. And as you can see, the frustum inner stays the exact same. Now I could repeat uh, uh, the exact same thing for frustum inner, and now I can grade the inner frustum, make it red or whatever. I will leave that alone. So we can actually uh, go ahead and, uh, yeah. Other things you, you might want to check is select the primaries layer up here. So we are now basically tweaking the node controls of the actual projection node, which is an rectangular to LED wall plugin. We need to make sure this is linked to the stage manager. Um, uh, basically, whatever we have configured in here, right? So this button should be enabled and we should tell it to project to the correct wall. In the projection tab, we should make sure uh, we are projecting to camera sphere, not dome. If we choose dome, the projection is slightly different. 
um, because we have this, uh, uh, we can choose the radius of the dome. If I crank this down, if you look, oops, that was far too small. Here we go. And at some point you're outside of the dome, right? And you can also choose the floor height. Ooh, this goes very fast. Uh, just so you have an idea of how it works. This is not the perfect footage to do this with. So I'll set this back to sphere. And we obviously want to link our camera in this plugin to the shot camera, which again is, sorry, which again is controlled by the NCAM tracking information that's coming in. All right, so now that we have set this up, uh, one thing I'd like to do is go to Frustum Outer, go to the Film Up menu and add a little bit of blur because this makes this edge here so much smoother. Very, very nice. And now, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's just uh, do a little quick test. And what you will see if you look at the LOD wall versus the um, SDI output from the camera is that the LOD wall will get pretty distorted the closer I get. If I do an extreme example, the red stuff flickering in the SDI output is a moiré effect. Ignore that for the time being. But you know, the closer I get, the more distorted the LED wall will look. However, the SDI output from the camera will still show a perfectly nice image. If I go back, maybe over here, And obviously, we could very well disable the Frustum highlight if we don't need that, um, because it's a 2D clip anyways. And it totally works without that, because obviously, depending on your camera movement, eventually uh, the Frustum might get in the way and ruin your shot, which it doesn't if it is disabled. As you can see, even without Frustum Highlight, we're still perfectly real time and everything's working nicely. All right, and with that, we're at the end of our demo. Good stuff.